Hey guys, thanks for tuning into my channel. My name is Max Convexity. It's a chilly 39 degrees here in Austin, Texas. Shout out to Papa Convexity for getting me this sharp looking uh, jacket. It's doing a good job keeping me warm on a day like today. Today I want to do a more general topic. I'm not going to talk so much about how options work or the details of the option strategies. I'm going to talk about how to allocate your portfolio with these high yield covered call funds. So stick around and I'll get right into the middle of it. Okay, for today's topic, I thought it would be interesting to make a flowchart. Now, full disclosure, I never took the flowchart uh, course in college. Well, come to think of it, they didn't really have computers that much when I was in college. They did, but not to this degree. All right, so I made a flowchart. What I, I get this question all the time, and this is what inspired this video. I got a question from an old friend of mine the other day, Mitch. Mitch uh, texted me and asked me some advice on some yield max funds. I told Mitch earlier, oh, probably three months ago when QQQY first came out, how much I loved it, and Mitch got a few shares of that. Anyway, Mitch was wondering, well, should I get more of that? Should I get something else? You know, what should I do? So I made this flow chart, not really so much for Mitch, but just for anybody, because I get this question all the time. It really depends on your personal circumstances, so I can't really tell Mitch or anyone else particularly, but I made some general rules with the flowchart. All right, so the first thing is, uh, the first thing is you shouldn't be investing if you don't at least have your 401k going strong and you're maxing out your contributions to that. You shouldn't even be, even be messing with these high yield funds. If you have to have your basic needs taken care of first. Make sure you have a roof over your head, you have your other investments, you're, you're contributing at work to your 401k, or saving on your own. But yes, once your basic needs are met, then we can start talking about uh, covered call funds. All right, so the first question I would ask anybody is I would say, do you already have more than 20% of your portfolio in these covered call type funds? And if you don't know, it probably means you don't. These covered call funds are brand new. There's a couple that have been around for a few years, but they're pretty new. So most people probably don't. And I don't know how many shares Mitch bought, so I, I don't know. But that's the first thing I would say is, is add up your retirement, you know, your retirement accounts, your 401k and any Roth IRAs and any savings that you have for retirement. Say that comes to $500,000. Well, if you have more than $100,000 of these funds, you're, you're doing it wrong. You're over allocated. So if you do have more than 20% in your portfolio, go talk to your planner. Um, I bet Mitch's planner really loves me. <laughs> planners don't like uh, planners don't like these types of funds generally. All right, and then talk to your planner, and then of course watch the cover caller daily, of course, because I'll cover more of this stuff later. But if the answer is no, you have less than 20% of your portfolio on these covered call funds, and I suspect that's the case with Mitch. Okay, my next question would be, do you need income? Notice how I put need in, in brackets. I mean, I guess everybody needs income. Income's great. But I'm talking about income from your investment portfolio. Do you have, do you already have like four rent houses and the rent houses are paying, are paying your income? If that's the case, you probably don't need these types of funds. But if maybe if you have, uh, if you have say all, um, long-term, you know, mutual funds and stock funds and ETFs like the QQQ and the, you know, um, SPY and those types of things, then you might want a little income because typical, those typical type of growth funds don't pay uh, dividends or if they do, they don't pay a very big one. I think the SPY, SPY is a great ETF for total growth, but I think its dividend is 1.6%. So somebody that has the whole half a million dollars in the SPY, even though that's a great thing to have, yeah, they would probably answer this question, yes. It also depends on how close you are to retirement. It depends on your expenses. It depends on a ton of things. I have a daughter that's going to get married here in a couple of years. She's not engaged yet, but she's going down that path. 
in the year that she gets engaged, I probably will over allocate a little bit to these income funds to try to get more current income to, to help pay for that. So it just depends on your circumstances. So if the answer is you don't need income, in the example, let's say you have rent houses, or maybe you work at, maybe you work at, you know, maybe you're a software engineer at, at Facebook and you already make $350 a year or something, and, and you don't have a very high mortgage. Okay, that's fine. If you don't need income, uh, don't get these funds because these funds have some drawbacks. They're, they're good at producing income, but they aren't without, you know, they, everything that has a cost also has a benefit or vice versa. You know what I mean? So yes, go talk to your planner in that case and then watch the covered color. But if you do need income, let's say you're getting close to retirement. Mitch is my age and probably, I wouldn't guess he, Mitch probably does want a little extra income. So in that case, if that is yes, but if it's yes, but you don't have more than 20% of your assets already in these types of funds, let's go on down to the next one. All right, so the next thing I would say is how many covered call funds do you currently own? There's probably 20 of these out there right now. There's three big ones, or I, I would say, no, wait, five. There's six big ones that I'm really, that I'm really, you know, happy with and really like. There's the Defiance Funds, and there's three of them. There's IWMY, and that gives you exposure to the Russell, the Russell Index, which is more mid-cap stocks. Then there is the QQQY, which gives you big tech exposure, because that that uh, trades NASDAQ options. And then there's JEPY, which gives you S&P 500 exposure. And they're all good, but they're, they're good in different ways. But then in addition, there's two JP Morgan funds that are excellent, excellent funds, JEPQ and uh, JEPI. Uh, one of them is NASDAQ and one of them is S&P. And then there's also another really good one called FEPI. And that one gives you tech exposure also. And then there's also some other ones coming out, but those are the main ones that I really like right now. So if the answer is you already have lots of them, you already have five or six of them, okay, well, that's good. Um, that is really good. So let's do this, though. But are you prioritizing growth or income and safety? Okay. The J.P. Morgan funds and the other fund, FEPI, give you more growth because of the way the op options are structured. I promise I wasn't going to talk about options, and I'm not going to, but the way their strategies are structured, they give you more growth, less income, and less safety. So if you answer that you want more income and safety, you would want to buy the Defiance Funds, which is the QQQY, JEPY, or IWMY. If you already have two of them, get the other one. If you already have one of them, split the money between the other two. Just Try to stay balanced within those two. Try to be diverse within the class of covered call funds. Make sure not to go over the 20% also. Keep, you know, keep that in mind. And also check the 20% number with your own planner. But that's just a good rule of thumb for me. All right, so that covers that. But let's say you are prioritizing growth. And, and you want income and safety, but you know it's, it's second on the list. Okay, well then we're going to go over here. Oops, sorry about that. I guess it's not 39 degrees. I lied. New Bronzeville is a town close by here, and it's 55 degrees there. So anyway, uh, yeah, I think it was 39 degrees before my computer updated. When I first came out here and I opened up the computer, it said 39 in the same place. So I was like, man, that's cold. All right. So let's talk about this. If you're trying to prioritize future growth in appreciation, but you want some income too. These these funds pay a good income. Their, their dividends aren't as high, but they pay a nice dividend also. But they give you more chance for, for future growth. So in that case, I would say buy FEPI or JEPI or JEPQ or iSpy. I forgot to mention iSpy earlier. iSpy is the new ProShares fund, and it's going to be really good at producing future growth. And it'll pay, a, you know, a decent decent dividend, probably about half of what these other ones pay. These funds over here, the growth ones, pay, you know, somewhere between 10 and 25 percent, whereas the ones over here in the current income category uh, pay anywhere. Right now, the lowest one, JEPI, paid 37, is paying about a 37 percent dividend right now, and the highest one 
Uh, IWMY is paying about 60%. So you're going to get about twice as much income. And you're also going to get more downside buffer. The income gives you a buffer on the downside. So, you know, that's why I say more safety. But these are plenty safe over here also. These are, you know, you're just going to get a little less income. But if we have a, you know, a bull market, you're going to do better in these funds if you're factoring in the total growth. All right, so let's see where we go to next on my little thing here. Okay, so if you want income and safety and just stay diverse, you know, get, and that's what I'm going to guess that Mitch is probably, Mitch is probably in this category. So just try to stay diverse between these three funds, you know, that's what I would do. Get an equal amount of all three of them, just my opinion. And of course, check with your planner to be sure and watch the cover caller every day. That's the name of my channel. My name's Max Convexity, but the channel's name is The Covered Caller. All right, so let's talk over here some more. All right. So on these, I do want to show something really quick. I promise not to get in the weeds about options, and I'm not going to, but I want to show something really quick. All right, the black line is the defiance fund, the fund that gives you more income and safety and downside protection. The blue line is the JP Morgan fund, the fund that will give you more upside appreciation, but a little less downside safety. You can see here, and I know this isn't a great chart, but you can see here back in October, whenever the market was dumping, I think the market dropped 10% in October. Well, the blue line, the JP Morgan fund, which is a great fund, it dropped, you know, even though the market was down 10%, this was, this JP Morgan fund was down about 9%. So, and you can see it was also down more than the, um, than the uh, Defiance fund, which was only down about 5%. It looks like this JP Morgan fund was down about 6.5%. So anyway, the JP Morgan funds and the ones in the growth category are going to lead on the downside. If you, for instance, if you knew the market was going to dump, you know, 30% this next year or whatever, you would definitely want the defiance funds. I always give this example. During COVID, the, uh, the market itself dropped 40%. And these covered call funds that were around dropped 30%, about, some of them 32%, but somewhere in that range. So they, even, they give you a buffer. Now, the defiance funds weren't around then. But I did a back of the napkin calculation, and if they were around then, they would have only dropped 25 percent. That's a big difference between 40 and 25 percent. Do you remember how nervous and how uncertain the future was during COVID? It, to drop 25 percent when everyone else is down 40 percent, that's a big freaking deal. That could save you from a margin call. So, you know, anyway, just take that with, with what it is. But I'm not going to explain why these funds work that way. I'm going to stay away from option strategies. But on the way up, the JP Morgan funds and also that fund FEPI and also that fund iSpy will do better on the way up. You're going to sacrifice a little bit of current income and safety, but you're going to have a little better return on the way up. Um, you can see it, it leads here too. It doesn't matter with dividends reinvested, without dividends reinvested, Different funds have different characteristics. I just want to make sure to get Mitch and everyone else that's watching into the right type of fund. All right, let's go back to this. Uh, oh, yeah, one other thing here. I, I This is not a great display. <laughs> I did this really quick. Uh, okay, this is today. This is right now. These quotes are 15 minutes behind, but this is... Uh, this is what the S&P is down. The S&P is down a nickel right now, or, you know, five basis points, five one hundredths of a point, basically flat. Well, look at JEPY. JEPY isn't down at all. That's a big difference, but, you know, that's 500, that's five one hundredths of a basis point. That's a twentieth of a percent. You know, that, that's a big difference when you compound that out every day, and that, that happens on down days and sideways days. JEPY will outperform the index which, you know, the underlying, that's, it's a big deal. Now, JEPI is the JP Morgan fund, the one that gives you more growth. Like I say, great fun, but it's, you know, it's going to lead on the way down. And since today's a down day, it's leading. Now, uh, only being down a little bit, this isn't the best demonstration, but I just thought I'd show that also.
All right, let's get back to the flow chart. I think the flow chart is just about done because, you know, the next thing I'm going to say, check with your planner to get a second opinion. And that doesn't just go for stuff I tell you, but it goes for stuff that you hear on the Internet generally. The Internet is a great place to get to do research and to get ideas, but then go to the professional. And I don't know that the professional is necessarily any smarter than me. I bet my IQ is the same as his, but the professional, what he knows is he has a professional relationship with you. You trust him, and he has... Uh, and he has to be, he has to, uh, he can't tell your business to anybody. You know, there's, there's privacy's a big deal. And your, your professional will know exactly how much your mortgage is and if you have your credit cards maxed out. And he'll know stuff that I don't know. So go get a good planner, be honest with him, and, you know, and run all this stuff by him. Like I say, not just me, that goes for anything you hear on the internet. Take it with a serious grain of salt. But it's good to do research. And then, of course, the last step is watch my channel every day. <laughs> of course, I, I really appreciate you guys. Hey, if you don't mind, like and subscribe. I don't think I've ever asked anyone to like and subscribe before. I always forget to say it. But if you want to, I mean, heck, like and subscribe. I'll try to do more content like this, but I'll also try to do more option-specific content. In fact, I'm working on a video right now that's totally in the weeds about options. It's an intro to option trading, and it's taking me forever to do because option trading is a very complex subject. But I hope it'll be out soon. All right, guys, have a wonderful afternoon.